Hey, this is Ian Parbury, author of Introduction to Game Physics with Box2D, and uh, this code demo shows you some uh, animation from sections 2.4 and 2.3, chapter 2. I'm moving these two particles around using Filet integration. Now, of course, on the screen, it looks the same as what you would get with Euler integration. Remember, Euler integration stores acceleration, velocity, and position, whereas Verlet integration stores acceleration, current position, and previous position. Now, one thing about these two particles, you can see that they stay always same distance apart and that's what section 2.4 is all about. Now we're using some pretty sophisticated mathematics here. We're using what's called gauss seidel relaxation but for us that's not a real big deal. Just a couple of dozen lines of code you see. So from section 2.3 all we've taken is Valet integration. The reason for doing this is it makes the coding of gauss seidel relaxation a whole lot easier. So we do get results on the screen that you can see, but we do get uh, ease of programming for the programmer. We get good code faster. Okay, so these two particles are moving around subject to a constraint. They stay the same distance apart. And the way we do it is we do a lot of work in between frames of animation. So in between each frame we move a particle well, both particles, and then we look and see how far apart they are. If they're too far apart, then we move them slightly closer together. And repeating that is uh, called, basically, relaxation. It's kind of cool watching these two particles bouncing around, and the funny thing about the human mind is that after a while looking at this, you can imagine that you see a stick between them. There really is no stick there. Let's draw a stick in between them and see what it looks like. Here we go. There's the stick. I've drawn it nice and thick so that you can see it easily on this video screen. Alright, so this isn't too hard to do. Like I said, a couple of dozen lines of code. And uh, we could probably do it with Euler integration almost as, as simply. The hard part comes when we have multiple sticks. So let's put in two sticks joined together at one end and see what it looks like. Here we go. Alright, so this uses the same technique. The problem here is when we relax, so we relax one stick first and then the other, relaxing the first stick might move the uh, endpoint with the join and uh, then relaxing the second moves it again in the wrong direction for the first stick. So the two sticks, when you relax their lengths, they fight against each other. The secret to gauss seidel relaxation is the amount that you relax by, chosen carefully to make the process converge. So it does eventually stop. So we just do it a few times, and it gets close enough to reality within one pixel of where it should be. Well, that's good enough. So we stop then. So while mathematicians would try to do gauss seidel relaxation lots of times until it gets very, very close, we're sloppy. Just do it a few times, two, three, four, five times, and then we're done. Now, we can also do springs by being more relaxed about gauss seidel relaxation. Do fewer iterations, and we end up with what looks like springs. Here we go. Here's a spring with two particles at the end. I've given you a ball bearing at each end and a picture of a spring in the middle, which we're stretching along, the, uh, along its length. And we get a pretty realistic looking spring. You know what would make it more realistic? is to have some sounds. So you notice that every so often in this demonstration we deliver an impulse to one of the particles just to make it look interesting in the background so I don't have to keep hitting a key to make it happen. So while chapter two is pretty heavy duty mathematics with no programming in it, uh, you can see that it is very relevant to programming. In fact, we'll use it 
uh, for a soft body toy, which I used to make this demo, later on in Chapter 4. Thanks for your attention now. Bye!